So how good is the NetGate 1100 as an alternative to the Starlink router? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for tea time. Today we have a little bit of fireside. That smokiness, guys, that smokiness. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, maybe something harder. Depends on what part of the planet you're on, right, guys? So anyways, today we're going to be talking about PFSense and NetGate and this brand new router that I brought in to test out for you guys. So I've been working on this, obviously, for like the last maybe four weeks, five weeks now. I've tested about five or six routers. I think this might be router number five. Hands-on testing, buying them, bringing them in, showing you exactly how they work, doing the configuration, and then testing them against my use case. Now, my use case would be going live on YouTube, something like that. That is very important to me because it is very close to what you would be doing if you were doing a conference call of some kind. Whereas you get a connection and then that connection needs to hold firm without dropping while you're having your meeting. Maybe it's a Google meeting, whatever, maybe Zoom. A lot of you came to me about, let's say six, eight weeks ago and said, listen, do you have any ideas on how I can keep this Starlink connection online? And there was a lot of things that I was looking into on how to be able to keep this connection up. And obviously if Starlink goes down, there's nothing that we can do to fix that. But if we have a secondary connection, maybe it's a wireless connection through AT&T or Verizon or T-Mobile, we can use that as a backup or a failover, or maybe even as a load balancer. We can also use, like what I'm doing, a landline. I'm using DSL. It's crap, but I'm still using it because it still works and it is very reliable. Even though it is slow as molasses, slow as a turtle, but it is very reliable. It will just keep on chugging along ever so slowly. So if Starlink goes down, my idea was, let's have AT&T pick up the slack. So what I did is I tried out a whole bunch of routers for this specific use case. I tried TP routers, UTT routers, trend net routers, all sorts of different routers. And now we've moved into a PFSense base router, which is NetGate. You could build your own PFSense router based on a very small computer that you have laying around or maybe a, an appliance, some very small thin layer type of terminal thing. You can do it with just about anything. It doesn't take a lot of power to make a router. So we use the NetGate 1100. This is a PFSense Plus, it's a security gateway, and it does do failover, and it does, of course, load balance and a lot of other things. You have a ton of functionality. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you the setup really quick, and then I wanna give you my thoughts on it and my testing to let you know, did it work, did it not work, how well did it work, how well did it not work. Before we go any further, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. There's a lot of great books over there that is 100% free just for you being here. Go check them out. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. So let's get right into the configuration. Now I've already set this up, but what I wanna do is show you exactly what I did. The one thing that we fell into a little bit of a problem with is that the way it comes, it wants to put everything into the exact same subnet and you cannot do that. For example, Starlink is on 192.168.1.1. We cannot have it on 192.168.1. Anything, it doesn't make a difference. You can't put it there. So. I put the NetGate PFSense on 192.168.10.1, so it's a different network. Now, once we did that, things started working. That's all I did was plug in two things. I plugged in AT&T and I plugged in Starlink into the unit itself, and then coming out of the LAN port, I plugged that into my computer. After I got everything running, I ended up plugging that LAN cable into a managed switch, and that managed switch is what I plug my computer into and everything else. So the first thing that you wanna do is go to interfaces and then come down to WAN, LAN, and this says WAN2, but this is normally named opt, but I renamed it to WAN2 because it just made simply more sense. So if we go to WAN1, click on this, we need to make sure that this is enabled. That's number one. 
And then we come down to the bottom where it says reserve networks. We need to uncheck this right here. This has to do with RFC 1918. And if we leave this on, then our Starlink will not work. Now this right here can be left alone, but I am unchecking it right now because I was doing some testing. But the most important thing is you need to uncheck this, block private networks and loop back addresses. This has to be unchecked. Make sure your WAN 1 is set up as DHCP. You can also set it with a static IP. It's completely up to you. But I just left it as DHCP and it will get the address from it. Now, if we move on to the next interface, we're gonna go to LAN to take a look at that. Make sure that that is turned on. We come down here, this is where we change the static IP of the unit itself. Now remember, if you're doing this with a Starlink router, you need to change this from 192.168.1.1 is what it normally comes with to another network. So this is 192.168.10.1, which is out of the network of 192.168.1.1. So we need to come into system and then go down to routing because we have to change the routing to where we want this to go. Now, what we're gonna do is you can see there's dynamic IP in here. That is for monitoring or for testing. So let's go in here and I'll show you where you need to change that. If we go into here, we can disable the gateway, which we're not gonna do. We're gonna come down here and it says monitor IP. Now this, I'm gonna use Cloudflare's DNS server, which is 1.1.1.1. Then we can save this and then go to the other gateway. Let's come over here to gateways and then go over to the next one, which is our AT&T. Now, when I click on that, I come down here, the monitor is set to Google's DNS server, which is 8.8.8.8. .8 we save that once again and go back to where we started. So this is all good. Now, the next thing we need to do is to go into gateway groups, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a group. Now, as you can see here, I have two groups that I created. One is called failover, one is load balancer. So let me show you what it looks like so you can do the same if you would like to, no matter if you wanna do failover or load balancer. So in failover, if we take a look at this, we create a group, I call it failover, and what this group says is that the gateway priority is tier one for this one right here, which is our Starlink, which is WAN one, and tier two for WAN two. What that is saying is that prioritize Starlink over AT&T. If tier one goes down, AT&T tier two will pick up, but it will prioritize always tier one over tier two. Now we can set this up at different type of trigger levels. Right now it's set for member down. What that means is, is when tier one goes down completely, that's when it will transfer over. We can set it for packet loss or high latency or even packet loss or high latency. It depends on how granular you wanna get with it. For now, I'm just setting it as down. So if the connection goes down, it immediately transfers over. That is failover. As you can see, we have tier one and tier two. Now, if we move over to gateways once again and we take a look at load balancer. Now this one I wrote so that it's specific to load balancing. You can see that WAN 1 and WAN 2 are both tier ones. So what that means is PSSense is gonna try using both of them equally. Even though there's not equal amount of bandwidth there, it will try to use as much as it can so that they both use the internet. There's not one just sitting idle. Now this is great if you have two connections that are let's say unlimited, but if you have, for example, a cellular as a backup, well, you have a limited amount of data, so you don't wanna set it up this way. Because once again, this way means that we're going to use both connections all the time. And you're gonna blow through your data and then you're gonna start getting charged a lot of money. So I have this triggered as member down also. We can play with that. And that is something that I'm going to be playing with and reporting back to you to let you know if it's working or not. So at this point, go over to firewall rules and in here, create a rule specific for our LAN. Not WAN, WAN2, we don't need rules in there right now. Remember, we're doing a basic setup. We go to LAN. Now what we need to do is change this rule right here. The rule up here where it says anti-lock rule, that comes on the NetGate PFSense already pre-installed in here. Now we also see the IP6 here. I don't play around with that, I just leave it alone. But this one right here is the one that we need to change. And as you can see here, it says gateway failover. Remember, we made that failover group and that's what we're going to be using. So let's go ahead and edit this. Now, everything at the top stays the same. We have pass or pass through, you can do block or reject. So it's pass through, 
Over here is the interface is LAN, IPv4, protocol any. We can select any of the protocols that we want to be passed through. We're gonna leave it as any, that means all will go through. The source is LAN net, destination, anywhere, just getting out of the system. We're opening it up so that we can send data out. Now, the most important thing here is, is we come down all the way to the bottom or close to the bottom, it says gateway. And here we're going to select either failover or load balancer. It depends on how you want this to run. Normally it'll be set for default. We can also use the gateway that is only for Starlink, or we can use the gateway here, which is only for AT&T. That's a possibility too. We could put more rules in here to say, for example, we can make another rule instead of saying any, we can say TCP and then associate TCP or this rule to only one gateway. Let's say all TCP traffic will go through AT&T. So we would select this gateway here. So there is a ton of things that you can do with this system, but I'm only scratching the surface and getting it to work for you. So as of right now, this works. So after the configuration was done, I ran it against YouTube. Now, what did I do? I went into my YouTube platform and I created a stream. I made it so that it is an unlisted stream, so it's just me on there. And what I did is I went and unplugged WAN1, which would be Starlink, to see exactly what would happen. How long would it spool? Would it come back? Would it never come back? What is the time? What is the duration of downtime? That's what we wanna know. And then I would plug WAN1 back in, which is Starlink, and see how long it gets back to where it left off. And then I would do the same thing with WAN2, which would be AT&T, to see what that flip-flop is when we're dealing with failover. Then I set it up as load balance to see how that worked. And I did the exact same procedure. I unplugged WAN1, which is Starlink, to see what ended up happening. And I did the same thing with WAN2 and put them all back together. Now, what I found out was it really didn't work out well. That is it. My expectations for PFSense was a lot higher than what I got out of it. Now, I'm not a guru at this software. So what I wanna do is tell you exactly what it did. And then if you are a guru at PFSense, you can let me know where I dropped the ball. That is before I send this damn thing back because it's not working out very well. In comparison to what others were, at a lower cost. So once again, I'm trying to find a router for you guys that is a good value, all right? So yes, we can go buy a $2,000 setup and this thing will be absolutely perfect, but I'm not trying to do that for you guys. I wanna get the lowest cost that actually will do the job well, let's say. Nothing's gonna be perfect because the only way to truly get redundancy, let's say, is you need to do it out of your network. It needs to be done in the cloud somewhere, and you're going to have to pay a cloud service to do it. The reason being is once you have a session set up, let's say with YouTube, and you're streaming, when your network goes down, it has to swap over to the other network, which is a different gateway. And now the software like OBS, for example, says, what the hell's going on here? And then it has to hiccup and do its thing to figure it out and all the rest of the stuff, okay? So whereas if you use something offsite, uh, in the cloud, for example, and you're paying for it, then that IP, that session remains the same and you're just streaming data to it. And then that VPN, let's call it, that spot in the cloud will be sending to YouTube. So you could be sending from 10 different networks and it doesn't really care. It's gonna keep on sending. So once again, we're trying to get the best that we can for what we have and the best value, all right? And right now, this NetGate 1100 is not it. And once again, I wanna tell you why. And then I want you to tell me what I did wrong. So the setup was pretty easy. I mean, dealing with networking, it's not that big of a deal of what you're doing here. But what I found that would happen is it doesn't matter if we'd used failover or if we used load balancing. With failover, you're setting up tiers. You have a tier one and tier two. Tier one is your Starlink, tier two is the AT&T. This means that tier one has priority and then tier two will pick up where it left off. That is how you would set up failover. If you do load balancing, then you both have the same tier. So they're both tier one and they continuously both send data together. The problem is, is that's not how it really works. Once Starlink would go down, I would unplug the WAN one 
and then AT&T picks up where it left off. Sometimes it might spool for like eight seconds, sometimes none at all. It just really depends. And then after a while, it'll spool a bunch where it does the actual conversion over, let's say, 30 seconds, 45 seconds down the road, either which way. The problem that I have is not that spooling, but it would never come back to Starlink. So it would continuously send with that slower speed that it found with AT&T forever. Doesn't matter if it's set up as a load balance or set up as a failover. It just will never give that its full speed anymore. I have OBS set to set, let's say, three megabits up. Once it fails over to AT&T, that's it. It's only going to send over 1.7, never anything more on that OBS stream that goes into YouTube. Period. End of story. The only way to get it to load balance or fail over properly again is to actually disconnect both of them internal to the software. Say this WAN is down, that WAN is down, turn them back on, and now everything is balanced again. If you're doing load balancing, if you do the exact same procedure and you have it set up for failover, then Starlink will have the majority. And once again, AT&T will have nothing going on. So why this is, I really don't know. It might just be very simple, a simple correction. I just don't see anywhere in there that's going to allow me to fix this, all right? Once again, I don't care that it's going to spool for eight seconds. What I care about is it never starts sending. It never goes back to sending through Starlink once Starlink goes down. And that is just an absolute no-go for me. It just will not work. Because we want Starlink to be, once again, the majority of the signal, the majority of the bandwidth, because they do have the majority. So guys, I hope you found this a little bit helpful. I don't want to poo-poo on this NetGate 1100 as of yet. I want to get your input into it. Let me know where I dropped the ball. Let me know anything that I can change. Do so in the next few days before I kick this thing to the curb and move on to another route. Anyways, I hope you're enjoying this series about different routers and which ones work for me, and hopefully it gives you an idea of which ones will work for you. If you enjoy this and you just want to say thank you for all of my time, you can click down here where it says thank you, or even better, simply become a member of the channel. And also don't forget to share this with your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, on Facebook, wherever. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel as of yet, why the hell not? subscribe and then click this little bell icon over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out you will be notified of it immediately and finally head over to my website jchristina.com where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years and hopefully there's something there that you might like and if there is please pick it up and support me and my family that's it guys I'm out of here for the end of the vlog many blessings to you and your family stay safe stay healthy and we'll see you in the next one love you all <laughs>